73rd Annual Academy Awards. Brought to you by Chevy. The cars you can depend on. Chevy will be there. American Express. Whether you're seeing a movie or making one, we can help you do McDonald's. We love to see you smile. And the joy of Pepsi, the proud sponsor of the Academy Awards. It's Hollywood's biggest night, and we're here to greet the celebrity arrivals. The limos are lined up around the block, and here come the stars. Double Oscar winner and nominee again tonight, Tom Hanks and wife Rita Wilson. We've watched her grow from teen actress to full-fledged Hollywood star, Winona Ryder. There's Chow Yun-Fat, who did such an amazing job in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. A multi-talented star of films and records, Jennifer Lopez. A member of a famous film family, nominee Jeff Bridges. A former Oscar winner back again tonight, Angelina Jolie. And here's the unpredictable power behind Austin Powers, the elusive Mike Myers. The Oscar-nominated daughter of Oscar-winning actress Kate Hudson. No one wants to sit next to him at the banquet, Sir Anthony Hopkins. From Jerry Maguire to Nurse Betty, an actress who always lights up the screen, Renee Zellweger. Here's Variety senior columnist, the legendary Army Archer, talking to Oscar winner Julie Andrews. The gladiator himself, Oscar nominee Russell Crowe. There's nothing like a dame, in this case nominee and former Oscar winner Dame Judi Dench. There's the stunning Catherine Zeta-Jones and her actor-producer husband Michael Douglas. She will always be the pretty woman, Oscar nominee Julia Roberts. Now let's go inside and enjoy the 73rd Annual Academy Awards. presenting the Best Performance Award to Bing Crosby. Bing? Yeah, Gary. I wish you could see Lucille Ball, magnificent in a white gown. 1949, when Jimmy Stewart was married, every Bobby Sox was married. And so for the second time, Olivia de Havilland walks up to the It's a big night for Bogey and Baby and uh, Little Stephanie. The wedding of two great entertainment mediums with uh, motion pictures and television. And with Oscar, 25 years old, it's high time. In New York, the winner is on the waterfront. I hope this is not a mistake, because I won't give it back for anything in the world. I guess all I can do is say thank you. Now, the winner is Gregory Peck. It is a long journey to this moment. I think, though, that half of this belongs to a horse. Hello, gorgeous. George C. Scott. I think it is one hell of an honor, and I am thrilled. This is my agent who, uh, about 10 years ago, advised me that I had no business being an actor. Thank you. I'm very honored to have been nominated with actresses like Jane Fonda and Shirley MacLaine and Anne Faye. Martin. Receive my Academy booklet on how to dress like a serious actress. The winner is Robert De Niro, the Rachel. You like me right now. I feel as though I'm standing on magic legs. Gentlemen, 
This is not a movie set. We really are here in space. My commander, Yuri Yusufov, and my NASA colleague, Jim Voss, and I are all big movie fans. When we have a little time to relax, 235 miles above the Earth, we watch movies, and we like to keep track of those who have been nominated for Hollywood's highest honor. So tonight we're going to stay up a little bit late to root for our favorites and to learn who the big winners are. You may notice there's another guy hanging around here, and I think there's only one way to get rid of him. So get the ejection pod ready. Ladies and gentlemen, here is your host of the 73rd Annual Academy Awards, Mr. Steve Martin. much you know we live in a great country if this statue were in Afghanistan it would have been destroyed by now <laughs> when they asked me back in January if I would host the Oscars the first thought that came into my mind was would there be enough time for my facelift to heal <clears throat> thank you uh, astronauts by the way that introduction cost the government one trillion dollars <laughs> So there goes your tax cut. <laughs> but I wanted a nice intro, so. The astronauts are watching the show from over 200 miles up, and right now, all over the world, there are 800 million people watching us right now, and every one of them is thinking the exact same thought, that we're all gay. <laughs> But that is what is great about show business. It's a tolerant business. It's the, it's the most tolerant in the world. You have black people, white people, Asians, Hispanics, Jews, Christians, all working together, all because of a single common love, publicity. <laughs> now, uh, many of you people in the audience I've worked with, not in movies, but at parties. <laughs> I loved your last film. Oh, and you loved mine? Oh, well, thanks. Is Ellen Burstyn. Ellen Burstyn has... Uh, please hold your applause until it's for me. Um, Ellen Burstyn did something that not many actresses would do for a role in a movie. She made herself look 30 pounds heavier and 20 years older. And Russell Crowe still hit on her. I think we're always on opposite sides of the stage, actually. Uh, Kate Hudson, 21 years old. I love welcoming the young stars to show business because it reminds me of my own death. <laughs> Kate, don't you find it strange when you first start to be famous? I mean. We get so many things we don't deserve. You get free tickets, you get moved to the front of the line. Would you like a new liver? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Martin would like it, give me that. <laughs> and it's so strange when you first start to get recognized, like in the supermarket, are you Steve Martin? Or at the airport, are you Steve Martin? Or making love, are you Steve Martin? <laughs> but people say to me, Steve, you're a Hollywood actor. You must be so separated from the world. How do you keep in touch with ordinary life? Well, it is possible, and it can be done. Like, the other day, I was having dinner at my house with Mel, Julia, Tom, and Gwyneth. <clears throat> now, earlier, Mel had called and wanted to bring a friend, you know, some guy who helps children. <clears throat> and I said, Mel, let's just keep it names above the title. And he understood, and he was fine with that. And then Tom said, you know, you just can't get decent sunglasses anymore. 
And Julia said, well, there's a great sunglasses shop in Beverly Hills. So I said to Tom, you know, the next time you have your driver drop your kids off at school, why don't you have them pick you up a pair of sunglasses? And Tom said, well, I drop my kids off at school. And I said, what? <laughs> and then Tom said to Gwyneth that he loved Shakespeare in Love. And then Gwyneth said to Tom that she loved Castaway. And then Julia said to Mel that she loved What Women Want. And Mel said to Julia that he loved Aaron Brockovich. And then it was late, and they all went home. And I thought, this is what I've always dreamed about. Dinner at home with friends where we discuss the arts. <laughs> uh, look how beautiful Julia Roberts looks. Julia. <laughs> Julia, I miss our phone calls. But it seems like ever since you got caller ID, you're never home. Designers now rush to provide clothes and jewels for people attending the Oscars. This tuxedo uh, was given to me by a famous designer, provided I mentioned their name on the show. And then the producer said, you can't do that. This is not the White House. You're going to have to. <laughs> You're going to have to pay for your tuxedo. So I didn't know what to do. I was in a moral dilemma. So I called my friend Giorgio Armani. See, how are we doing on time? Oh, we got five hours. Um, <laughs> let's see. There's Javier Bardem, who gave... <laughs> who gave um, such a brilliant performance in a movie about a homosexual poet persecuted by hostile military forces. A movie the rapper Eminem called the feel-good movie of the year. And there's Charlton Heston. Now, be careful what you say to him because he thinks he was in Gladiator. <laughs> and there's Tom Hanks. And by the way, It's interesting, if Tom wins tonight, that means between Tom and myself, we will have three Best Actor Awards. <laughs> and Tom and Rita have one of the most enduring marriages in show business, and it is not easy to keep a marriage together in Hollywood because, well, we sleep with so many different people. <laughs> There's... <laughs> There's Ang Lee, uh, director. <laughs> director of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Now, at first, I didn't realize that was a movie. Because to me, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon sounds like something Siegfried and Roy do on vacation. <laughs> um, Ticket prices went to $10 in New York, and I understand why, Julia. <clears throat> <laughs> but I'm concerned because, you know, the audience, <laughs> the audience still has valid complaints, and we have to listen to them. One, they feel that the trailer gives away too much of the movie. Um, like, I saw the trailer to Dude, Where's My Car? And it ruined it for me. <laughs> now, maybe that's not fair because I had read the book. Um, <laughs> but maybe critics are right. Maybe Hollywood movies are too violent. Now, I took a nine-year-old kid to see Gladiator, and he cried through the entire film. Now, maybe it was because he didn't know who I was. You know, you know what I've just realized? That hosting the Oscars is like making love to a beautiful woman. 
It's something I only get to do when Billy Crystal is out of town. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Well, we have. We have to give away 27 Oscars, three honorary Oscars, including a Lifetime Achievement Award to 81-year-old Dino De Laurentiis. <laughs> or as Anna Nicole Smith would call him, fresh meat. <laughs> so I am pleased to introduce our first presenter, one of the stars of Traffic, Catherine Zeta-Jones. Centuries before man knew how to count the years, he knew how to draw pictures. Cavemen illustrated their walls with their dreams. Today's dreams are projected on the walls of multiplexes, illustrated by the movie's art directors, whom we now honor. For best achievement in art direction, the nominees are... Tim Yip whose designs provided the perfect setting for blending fantasy and legend in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Michael Kornbliss for the art direction and Meredith Boswell for the set decoration of that yule-tide tale of Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Arthur Max for the art direction and Crispian Salas for the set decoration that depicted the glory of the Roman Empire in Gladiator. Martin Childs for the art direction, and Jill Cotier for the set decoration of the pained and turbulent life of the Marquis de Sade in Quills. And from a different page of French history is the art direction of Jean Rabas and the set decoration of Francoise Benoit Fresco that captured the culinary perfection of Battelle. And the Oscar goes to Tim Yip for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. This is the first Academy Award for Tim Yip. He's also nominated for costume design for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Thank you very much. This is the first time i in the Oscar. <laughs> uh, a little bit nervous. Uh, first of all, I have to thank for my parents because they are not there. Uh, I hope that they, they can listen to me somewhere here because they are already gone. And I want to thank my family to support what I am working on. And especially for, uh, thanks for Annie. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Academy Award winner, Nicholas Cage. The awards Dame, Tony nominated, critically acclaimed, Oscar winner, and national treasure have all been used to describe tonight's nominees for outstanding performance by an actress in a supporting role. But I say they're simply the best. The nominees are... Judy Dench in Chocolat. Throw me a party. <laughs> what? When is this, my 70th? Let's show the blighters we're ready to go down dancing. <laughs> <laughs> when I need help, I ask for it. Marcia Gay Hardy in Pollock. You are a great artist. I believe in Jackson Pollock. 
And there's you, and there's the painting, and you, you need, you need, you need, you need. Kate Hudson in Almost Famous. We are not groupies. This is Penny Lane, man. Show some respect. Groupies sleep with rock stars because they want to be near someone famous. We're here because of the music. We are Band-Aids. Francis McDormand in Almost Famous. Is this Marianne with the pot? No. This is not Marianne with the pot. This is Elaine, his mother. Could you give William a message for me, please? Tell him to call home immediately and also tell him I know what's going on. Julie Walters and Billy Elliot. Find a place on that bloody wall and focus on that spot. Then whip your head round and come back to that spot. Prepare. And the Oscar goes to... Marcia Gay Harden and Pollock! This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Marcia Gay Harden. What a thrill. Members of the Academy, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> For taking the time to even view the tape and consider our film. Ed Harris, thank you for inviting me to share your passion. You are a brave director and an even braver actor, and I love you. Dad, who's here tonight, Thank you for teaching me how to soldier through tough situations, and Mom for teaching me how to do it gracefully. To Fred Berner, Peter Brandt, and Joe Allen, thank you for rearing this film and for ushering it into the world. Sony Pictures Classic, and especially Michael Barker. To my family and my agents and Mary Ellen Mulcahy, without whom I would never be here. My uh, lawyer, my husband Thaddeus Shield. <laughs> All the people who help you in this crazy business, I want to thank you, and for the inception of the film, James Treasure and Barbara Turner. Thank you. We'll continue in a moment with Russell Crowe, Ben Stiller, and a performance by Sting. Don't go away.
You know, uh, they used to say when they opened the envelope, and the winner is. And if you notice, they have changed it to, and the Oscar goes to. Because, God forbid, anyone should think of this as a competition. <laughs> it might make the trade ad seem crass. <laughs> and now I'm pleased to introduce the star of the film Gladiator and a man I like to call a close personal friend. But he asked me not to. <laughs> Russell Crowe. Hey folks, how you doing? On this list of nominees are people who have thrilled me, astounded me, and protected me. I have a great deal of respect for the men and women who do this job, and it's my privilege to read the nominations in the category of editing. For almost famous, Joe Hutching and Sarah Klein. For Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Tim Squires. For Gladiator, Pietro Scalia. For Traffic, Stephen Midioni. For Wonder Boys, Dee Dee Allen. And the Oscar goes to... Stephen Mirioni for Traffic. This is the first Oscar and nomination for Stephen Mirioni. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank my family, the Academy, USA Films, um, our producers, uh, Ed Zwick, Marshall Herskovitz, and Laura Bickford, uh, my crew, Doug Kreiss, Keith Sauter, Norman Walker, and Denise Marquez. Um, I'd like to thank Stephen Gagan for writing such a beautiful and emotional script. Um, and the entire cast and crew, uh, whose outstanding achievement speaks for itself. And uh, Steven Soderbergh, it is a thrill to work with you, and it's a privilege to know you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I, uh, I forgot to mention that the producers this year, maybe you saw this or read this, have offered a free TV to the person who gives the shortest acceptance speech. I just saw Julia Roberts go, ooh. <laughs> and now our next presenter is a very talented star. You loved him in There's Something About Mary. You loved him in Meet the Parents. And you were fine with him in Mystery Men. <laughs> Here he is, Ben Stiller. Thank you. You know, there's an old saying in Hollywood, it's not the length of your film, it's how you use it. <laughs> the nominees for best live action short film are By Courier, Peter Riegert and Erica Frederick. One Day Crossing, Joan Stein and Christina Lazaridi. Quiero Ser, I Want to Be, Florian Gallenberger. Seraglio, Gail Lerner and Colin Campbell. A soccer story, Uma Historia de Football, Paolo MacLean. And the Oscar goes to... Quiero Ser, I want to be Florian Gallenberger. First Academy Award and nomination for Florian Gallenberger. Good evening. I guess there are not so many great moments in your life and this is definitely one of the greatest for me. And therefore I want to thank the wonderful people who made this film with me. Some of them are here. Where are you? And 
And I want to thank Mexico, where we shot the film, for being such a strange and hard to understand country with so much magic. I want to, I want to thank my film school and the film foundations who financed me. I hope they will also finance me in the future. And I want to thank all of you for this great honor. It's a really great moment for me. Thank you very much. You know, there's another old saying in Hollywood. Don't try to be funny while introducing the nominees for Best Animated Short Film. <laughs> the nominees for Best Animated Short are Father and Daughter, Michael Duduk DeWitt. The Periwig Maker, Stefan Scheffler and Annette Scheffler. Rejected, Don Hertzfeld. And the Oscar goes to Father and Daughter, Michael Dudok DeWitt. This is the first Academy Award and second nomination for Michael Dudok DeWitt. He was an Oscar contender in 1994 for The Monk and the Fish. I would like to thank uh, my two producers, Claire Jennings from London and Willem Thijssen from um, Amst Amsterdam, and um, both for their dedication and very hard work. And I would like to thank especially my wife, Arielle, for, for her support. Thank you, Academy members. This is fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Miss Halle Berry. I'm here to introduce the first nominated original song. It's from the animated film, The Emperor's New Groove. The film cleverly combines familiar elements of fairy tales and fables with hip contemporary dialogue to produce a family film that is truly for the whole family. The song was written by Sting and David Hartley, and it's called My Funny Friend and Me. Ladies and gentlemen, Sting. <laughs> In the quiet time of evening When the stars assume their patterns And the day has made its journey And we wonder just what happened To the life we knew Before the world had changed not a thing I held was true But you were kind to me And you reminded me That the world is not my playground There are other things that matter And what a simple need protecting and my illusions I would shatter but you stayed and you call my name I know this would have walked out on a lousy game but look who made it through but your funny friend and Blend of the 
those two funny friends that's us Annette Benning and Angelina Jolie will join us in Oscar's next segment, along with announcement of the Outstanding Supporting Actor. Two-time Academy Award nominee, Annette Benning. It's the stuff movies are made of. A sexy single mom with brains and a lot of heart stumbles on a cover-up by a water-polluting utility company. She decides that right can win over might and money and begins a David versus Goliath battle on behalf of cancer-stricken residents in a local town. Ladies and gentlemen, the heroic tale of Aaron Brockovich. I want you to think real hard about what your spine is worth, Mr. Walker. Or what you might expect someone to pay you for your uterus, Miss Sanchez. Then you take out your calculator and you multiply that number by 100. Anything less than that is a waste of our time. By the way, we had that water brought in special for you folks. It came from Llewellyn Hinkley. I think this meeting is over. Damn right it is. She's one of Spain's leading ladies. Please welcome Penelope Cruz. I'm here to present tonight's award for Best Achievement in Costume Design. The nominees are... The history and traditions of ancient China were the inspirations for the colorful designs of nominee Tim Yip and his memorable costumes for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. The humorous drawings of Dr. Seuss were adapted for the screen by nominee Rita Ryak, who created the wardrobe for the Grinch and the good people of Whoville. The power, glory, and opulence of the Roman Empire provided the themes for the magnificent costumes designed by nominee Jan T. Yates for Gladiator. In 102 Dalmatians, nominee Anthony Powell not only saw spots, but plenty of color for his splashy costume creations in this second tale of canine kleptomania. And in Quill's Jacqueline West costumes reached back in time to evoke the dark period of the French Revolution and the final days of the Marquis de Sade. And the Oscar goes to Jan T. Yates for Gladiator. This is the first Academy Award and not... Thank you, Academy. Thank you, DreamWorks. Thank you, Walt Parks, Branko Lustig, Terry Needham. A huge thank you to Ridley Scott for his vision and his incredible inspiration. But this doesn't belong to me alone. It belongs to a huge costume crew who worked so hard in Malta and Morocco and in the UK. It belongs to the armor makers, it belongs to the costume makers, 
to the jewellery, footwear creators and the costume breakers. I couldn't have done it without these people, without Vanessa Jones, without my husband, Tony Dixon, without Jake Scott, and I couldn't have done it without Rosemary Burrows, Annie Hadley and Sammy Howarth. Thank you. By the way, Penelope Cruz has starred in such movies as Live Flesh, Woman on Top, and has just finished a movie called Blow. <laughs> and now, here to erase that imagery from your mind is the president of the Academy, Bob Ramey. Thank you. You'll be hearing those words a lot tonight from some extremely grateful people, including me, as I finish my fifth and final year as president of the Academy. I'd like to thanks very much. I'd like to say a brief thank you to more than 6,000 Academy members and to our Board of Governors for allowing me to serve them. It's been an honor and, frankly, a great thrill. For 73 years, the Academy has endeavored to advance the arts and sciences of motion pictures and to recognize outstanding achievements in filmmaking by conferring our Golden Oscar. Filmmakers are extraordinary artists based all around the world and supply that world with its most glorious and powerful art form. Let's use that power with a high and humane sense of purpose. And uh, for some of you who've fallen a little short of that mark, you'll be given another chance between uh, now and the end of my term. I'll be considering some presidential pardons. Thank you. Last year's Oscar winner for her role in Girl Interrupted returns to deliver one this year, Angelina Jolie. I'm very excited to be here tonight to present the award for Best Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role. And the nominees are... Jeff Bridges in The Contender. You know what this is? That's a shark steak sandwich. That's shark steak. Hmm. You want half? Oh, uh, no, thank you. <laughs> are you a vegan? No. You had lunch? Uh, so, uh, you choose not to break bread with the President of the United States? Willem Dafoe in Shadow of the Vampire. There was a time when I fed from golden chalices. But now, don't look at me that way. Benicio. Albert Finney in Aaron Brockovich. Let me tell you something. I've worked all my life. I've built a firm and managed to keep it alive through lawsuits, injunctions, and evictions. I've survived a quadruple bypass, cancer, being born with one kidney, and having diabetes. Now, don't tell me I don't work hard. Don't tell me I haven't earned the right to stop, take a breath, and enjoy life. Joaquin Phoenix in Gladiator. You loved my father, I know. But so did I. That makes us brothers, doesn't it? Smile for me now, brother. And the Oscar goes to... Benicio Del Toro in traffic. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Benicio Del Toro.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the members of the Academy. I'd also like to thank Steven Soderbergh, Laura Bigford, Ed Swick, Marshall, Rick and Eileen, everyone at USA Films. And uh, I'd also like to dedicate this to two locations where we shot this film. Uh, we went from Washington, D.C. all the way to San Diego, California. I'd like to dedicate this to the people of Nogales, Arizona, and Nogales, Mexico. Thank you. In the next segment, Mr. Mike Myers and Academy Award nominee Julia Roberts will be here to add to the glamour of Oscar night. We'll be right back. Thank you, and thank you for nothing, actually. Um, <laughs> and no, no. And now I am pleased to introduce our next presenter, Mr. Mike Myers, who this year refused to do a movie because he felt the script wasn't any good. <laughs> what Hollywood is he in? <clears throat> Here he is, Mr. Mike Myers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the award we've all been waiting for. Julia, okay. Sound and sound editing. <laughs> now I know what you're asking yourself. Will the winner this year be Chet Flippy or Tommy Blue Blue? Or perhaps even Chad Shibitaker? <laughs> we don't know. But what I do know is that what's in this envelope is gonna send shockwaves through the industry. <laughs> oh yeah. First up, sound. The nominees are... For Castaway, Randy Tom, Tom Johnson, Dennis Sands, and William B. Kaplan. For Gladiators, Scott Millen, Bob Beamer, and Ken Weston. For The Patriot, Kevin O'Connell, Greg P. Russell, and Lee Orloff. For The Perfect Storm, John Wrights, Greg Rudloff, David Campbell, and Keith A. Wester. For U571, Steve Maslow, Greg Landeker, Rick Klein, and Ivan Chirac. And the Oscar goes to... Scott Millen, Bob Beamer, and Ken Wester for Gladiator. second Oscar and fourth nomination for Scott Milan and Bob Beamer and the first Academy Award for Ken Weston. He was nominated in 1996 for Evita. Well, uh, first of all, we'd like to dedicate this award to Ken Weston, the other member of our crew who couldn't be here tonight. He's at home, and we miss him. Um, we'd also like to thank Ridley Scott for his vision and his generosity. Um, we'd like to thank DreamWorks, um, Universal Pictures, of course, Walter Parks and Laurie McDonald, uh, Marty Cohen, and Lisa Dennis Kennedy. And we're proud to congratulate Doug Wick, David Franzoni, and Bronco Lustig for a truly great film, as well as our picture editor, Pietro Scalia, and composers Hans Zimmer and Lisa Gerard and everyone at Tadeo Studios. And a very special thanks to our supervising sound editor, Per Hallberg, and his great crew. And to our family, Cindy, Jessica, and Amy, and mom and dad. And Deborah, Ashley, and Brandon. Uh, and thank you, the Academy. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. The nominees for sound editing are for Space Cowboys, Alan Robert Murray and Bub Asman. For U571, John Johnson. And
And the Oscar goes to John Johnson for U571. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for John Johnson. Oh, wait. Clock's ticking. Got this going. All right. First off, uh, my thanks to the producers of U571, Dino and Martha DeLorenis, who make it exciting and an honor to be in this business. To the director, Jonathan Mostow, thank you for your loyalty, talent, and tenacity. To my whole crew, my deepest thanks. I'd like to mention a few of them that I've tortured the longest. Uh, Miguel Rivera, Keith Bilderbeck, Val Kuklowski, Bruce Stubblefield, Robert Troy. To the mixers, Rick, Steve, Greg, and Ivan, you guys set the bar for the best mix I've ever been through. To my partner, chief antagonist, fiercest promoter, most loyal friend, and my wife, Jill. I love you forever and after. Kids, don't stay up tonight. We'll be out real late. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the young and talented actress, Julia Stiles. One of the ten nominations for the Chinese language film Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon went to the original song, A Love Before Time. Combining the flavor and texture of Eastern music with the orchestral color and sensitive lyrics of Western culture, the magic of this stunningly beautiful film is truly realized in this evocative love ballad. For the 15th time, the Academy Award Orchestra will be conducted by Oscar winner Bill Conti. Written by Jorge Calandrelli, Tan Dunn, and James Seamus, here is Coco Lee to perform A Love Before Time.
I love to see dancers when they get hopped up on caffeine. <laughs> this next actress is so beautiful and so talented. She's one of the great movie stars of this generation, and there's nothing bad you can say about her. However, <laughs> I did hear this. Last week, she got all liquored up, stole a lawn boy, and tried to mow her pool. And yet, if you ask her about it, she'll deny it. Here she is, America's sweetheart, Julia Roberts. Since I took so long to walk across that fine stage, I'm just gonna cut to the chase and say I'm here to present cinematographer, and if it weren't for great cinematographers, we'd all be in radio. The nominees are. Peter Powell for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. John Matheson for Gladiator. Lajos Koltai for Milena. Roger Deakins for O oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Caleb Deschanel for The Patriot. Let's hope it's a name I can pronounce in real life. The Oscar goes to Peter Powell for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Peter Powell. Uh, I'm going to speak very fast. I would like to thank Ang Lee for giving me this once in a lifetime chance. Um, I must thank all my friends, including Choi Bo Ju, Zai, Liu Erdong, Bill Kong, Philip Lee, James Schumers, Huang Hui Ling, Fong Ping, Choi Su Ming, Charles Wang, Tony Ai, Billy Ng, Michael Barker, Tom Bernard, and his team, Chao Yun Fan, Michelle Yeo, Zhang Ziyi, Zheng Pei Pei, Zhang Zhen, David Lee, Liu Lo, Mannix, Deluxe Toronto, Leslie DeBras, and Christopher Safran, David Gersh, and Melanie Ramsey, my parents, my sisters, my mentor, Chen Yun Dat, for giving me spiritual guidance for over 15 years, my entire camera and lighting crew in Hong Kong and China, including Kenny Lam, Lei Duck Singh, Louis Chong, Jimmy Fong, Choi Chong Fai, Gok Zhen Wei, Lam Chun Wan. I must thank the Academy for giving me this award tonight. It's a great honor to me, to the people of Hong Kong and Chinese people all over the world. Thank you very much. Coming up, a special award to be presented by Oscar winner Dustin Hoffman and Academy Award nominee Kate Hudson. Academy Awards on ABC, brought to you by... Budweiser, with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. AT&T, wired, wireless, business, broadband, boundless. Kodak, share moments, share life. And American Express, whether you're seeing a movie or making one, we can help you do more. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome three-time Academy Award nominee, Morgan Freeman. When we decide to follow a new path in life, we must expect the unexpected. So we are reminded in the next of our nominated films, an epic love story set against the breathtaking beauty of early 19th century China. The theft of a mystical sword sparks this tale of intrigue that takes us into the world of legendary warriors, concealed identities, love, and betrayal. Here is a montage from Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon.
Now, um, now, I saw the movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I saw the movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I was surprised because I didn't see any tigers or dragons. And then I realized why. They're crouching and hidden. <laughs> and now it's time to give the award for best makeup. And it's ironic that this award for best makeup is given by someone who doesn't need any. Here she is, Kate Hudson. Whoever said you can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear should have given the job to a movie makeup artist. Even though they're magicians, they still can't make a performer taller or shorter, younger or older, but they can make a performer look taller, shorter, younger, older, or even something else. For best achievement in the constantly advancing art of makeup, consider this. In the cell, Jennifer Lopez is a child psychiatrist who dares to enter the twisted mind of a serial killer, played by Vincent D'Onofrio. This fantastic journey is made all the more chilling by the makeup creations of nominees Michelle Burke and Edouard Enriquez. Inspired by the whimsical drawings of the ever-popular Dr. Seuss, nominees Rick Baker and Gail Ryan spent three hours every day turning Jim Carrey into that mean old Yuletide thief, the Grinch who stole Christmas. Based on the original film, Nosferatu, and its real-life star, Max Schreck, nominees Anne Buchanan and Amber Sibley took Willem Dafoe and transformed him into a bloodthirsty creature of the night in Shadow of the Vampire. And the Oscar goes to Rick Baker and Gil Ryan for Dr. Seuss, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This is Rick Baker's sixth Academy Award. It is the first Oscar and nomination for Gail Ryan. In 1981, Baker received the first Oscar for makeup for an American werewolf in London. Thank you. <laughs> We'd like to thank the Academy, Universal Imagine, Brian Grazier, and Ron Howard for making such a creative film. The entire cast for their patience and cooperation, Jim Carrey for his brilliant performance, my crew, over 150 talented people contributed greatly to the work that we accept this award for. And I'm sorry I can't thank them all individually, but one I have to thank tonight is Kazuhiro Suji. Kazu not only applied Jim Carrey's Grinch makeup, but designed many of the makeups and deserves to be here with us. Lastly, I'd like to thank the loves of my life, my beautiful wife, Sylvia, my fantastic daughters, Veronica and Rebecca, my late mother, Doris, and my father, Ralph. I'd also like to thank my fabulous crew. Um, a special thanks to Terry Balliel for his wonderful work. Tell my husband I love him, and Laurel, I wish you were here. Thank you. Thank you. award a special actor Oscar winner Dustin Hoffman good evening for those of us here tonight that are 70 years old or younger Jack Cardiff was shooting film before we were born. And he's still shooting. Starting in front of the camera as a child actor at the age of four, Jack Cardiff, born in Yarmouth, England, to vaudevillian parents, moved his professional career behind the camera a decade later. He hasn't budged from that spot since. In the years that followed, he learned his craft as thoroughly and completely as anyone can and achieved an incomparable international reputation for his mastery of color and light. Some have said that he may have given birth to Technicolor. For three generations, Jack brought something extraordinary into our lives, an indelible vision of cinematic splendor. This is the first time an honorary Oscar has been given to a cinematographer. 
Here are some of his pictures, a few of his friends, and Jack Cardiff himself. Every time I saw Cardiff's name, I knew I was in for something very, very special. He's one of the greatest DP that ever lived. He's just a genius. He started very early when they started doing color. It's been a tremendous assistance to me to paint because I automatically analyze the light and shade and color and paint with light, if you like. It's a painting he's made, paintings that moved extraordinarily. He's using the lens like brush strokes. He gave me half of my performance with the lighting. There are good cameramen and fast cameramen. There are very few good and fast, and Jack was one of them. Waiting for that supper, man. If there was an impossible location to be found, John Houston was the man to find it. John always tried to get really difficult shots, and Jack always got what he wanted. Don't be worried, Mr. Ornott. Oh, I ain't worried, man. This was like being bathed in color. It was palpable. The color itself became the emotion of the picture. That's the whole essence of photography. You should go out and do something that's different and bold. My father sent me down the pit when I was 12. I got the big break on Sons and Lovers, and that was my favorite film as a director. I need to be loved, too. The cameraman has all kinds of creative work to do, but the director has the most creative job. Jack brought genuine artistic enthusiasms, the things that really excited him, that came from painting, from dance, from literature. That's what Jack has always stood for in his work, to create a depth and a quality and a range in the filmic image, which is not simply a flat illustration of the script. How you get a spiritual image in your mind and try to make that concrete, an image that hits you, then you have to translate it through this piece of equipment, through lighting, through the lens, I would call it a transference of emotion. Gentlemen, it is my special privilege to present to you Mr. Jack Cardiff. Well, for God's sake. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can't take him anywhere. Sorry. This, this has to be a dream. I often dream I'm working on a movie, but this one tonight is a biggie. I mean, God, all these film extras. And black tie, that's extra. God, we'll be over budget. It's a nightmare. And, and this wonderful Oscar, it's not real. It's special effects. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh. All right, I'm not dreaming. But it's mighty close. An honor like this for a whole lifetime span is an awesome air about it. And Embracing all the years I've worked, 70, more than 70 in fact, thinking of all those millions of difficult setups and millions of takes and retakes, but tonight it's all so worthwhile. I give my heartfelt thanks to the Academy for this great ultimate honor and thank you all so much for being on the set. Thank you. The Oscars will be 
return in a California minute with Samuel L. Jackson, Sarah Jessica Parker, and the presentation of some more coveted Oscars. Don't go away. I'm, I'm a little upset with our next presenter, Samuel L. Jackson, who beat me out for the role of Shaft. <laughs> he had a whole black take on the role that evidently I didn't have. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Samuel L. Jackson. Most films work from a script where the action is meticulously plotted and everyone on set knows exactly what is supposed to happen. But there is another kind of filmmaking that finds its story as it goes along, counting heavily on intuition and the real emotions of very real people to tell their story. It is called the documentary. And for our purposes, they come in two sizes, short and feature length. First, the documentary short subject category, where the subject matter is as varied as life itself. Here are the nominations. Big Mama, Tracy Saratine. <laughs> Curtain Call, Chuck Braverman and Steve Kalafa. <laughs> Dolphins, Greg McGillivray and Alec Lorimore. <laughs> the Man on Lincoln's Nose, Daniel Rehm. <laughs> on Tiptoe, Gentle Steps to Freedom, Eric Simonson and Leli Demos. And the Oscar goes to Big Mama, Tracy Serratin. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Tracy Serratin. Talk about beginner's luck. Thank you very much, members of the Academy. Uh, this is my first film, but um, I certainly didn't work with beginners. I thank the entire team of uh, documentary people at HBO, Jeff Bucus, Chris Albrecht, and most especially thank you, Sheila Nevins. Um, also, Jeff Bartz, Julie Anderson. There are a few people who were with me from the very beginning, three years ago. Um, Mitchell Block, Lisa Lehman, and my cinematographer, Tamara Goldsworthy. Um, I'm here because of my family and friends. Thank you. I wish I could name you all. Um, lastly, I want to dedicate this award to my film subjects, Walter Dees and his grandmother, Viola, who died, unfortunately, in December at 91. I'm sure she would want, though, to share this award with the grandmothers like her who are struggling to raise a generation of children whose own parents abandoned them. Um, thanks very much, uh, and thank you to all those grandparents out there. Thank you. The second part of the documentary, ca documentary category is films of feature length, and they are Into the Arms of Strangers, Stories of the Kinder Transport, Mark Jonathan Harris and Deborah Oppenheimer, Legacy, Todd Lindy, Long Night's Journey in Today, Francis Reed and Deborah Hoffman. Scottsboro, An American Tragedy, Barry Goodman and Daniel Anker. Sound and Fury, Josh Aronson and Roger Weisberg. And the Oscar goes to Into the Arms of Strangers, Stories of the Kinder Transport, Mark Jonathan Harris and Deborah Oppenheimer. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for Deborah Oppenheimer. This is the second Academy Award for Mark Jonathan Harris. He won an Oscar for Best Documentary Short Subject in 1967 for The Redwoods.
This is in this is in honor of the kinder transport survivors who have inspired us with their honesty and their eloquence and their humanity. And for their parents who loved them so much, they had the courage to send them away. The film is in memory of my mother, who was one of the 10,000 children, and my grandparents, whom she never saw again. We'd like to thank everybody at Warner Brothers for their extraordinary leap of faith, particularly Barry Meyer, Jerry Levin, and Bruce Rosenblum, as well as Dan Fellman. And I'd like to thank my family, my friends, my colleagues, and my partner, Bruce Halford. And I'd like to thank our wonderful team, particularly Kate Amon, Don Lenzer, Lee Holdridge, Gary Rydstrom, Dame Judi Dench, and my lovely wife. Uh, it's been a great privilege as a documentarian to share the pain and triumph of the people in our film. They've enriched all our lives. Thank you. Please welcome the talented Ms. Sarah Jessica Parker. Once again, it's time for a musical performance in the category Original Song. This one is from the film Meet the Parents, and the composer lyricist has heard his name called on the Oscar telecast 14 times as a nominee. Whether writing entire scores or songs that capture the essence of the story in 32 bars, Randy Newman can always be counted on to put his own personal twist on the human condition. This year, he's nominated for the song A Fool in Love, and he'll be performing it with the help of recording star and member of the Bangles, Susanna Hoffs. Ladies and gentlemen, a fool in love. Show me a man who's gentle and kind, and I'll show you a new. Now show me a man who takes what he wants So the poets say When you're a fool in love it Seems like the sky is always gray Turn around, there's someone in your way, and it's you, and you're in love. Never another spring for you, never a robin to sing for you. You're out there on your own when you're born. Oh, uh, the FBI has uh, just announced a suspect in the plot to kidnap Russell Crowe. And all I can say is, Tom Hanks, you should be ashamed of yourself.
Our next presenters are the stars of the sensational movie Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And here they are, Chow Yun-Fat and Michelle Yeoh. Create a cheering crowd in an ancient Roman arena. Make a man turn from skin to bones, or fashion a storm-swept ocean. In the world of visual effects, anything is possible. That's right. Even the laws of gravity can be defied in this world. The nominees for best achievement in visual effects are... Today, the Colosseum of Rome stands in ruins. But in the hands of nominees, John Nelson, Neil Cobalt, Tim Burke, and Rob Harvey, the beauty and the majesty of this ancient arena was restored to its original glory in Gladiator. In Hollow Man, Kevin Wait. Bacon plays a doctor who takes his own medicine. I'm starting to feel something. Nominees, Scotty Anderson, Craig Hakes, Scott Stockdeck, and Stan Parks Use texture mapping and computer animation to slowly turn the visible into the invisible. And it was a perfectly nice day when the Andrea Gale set out to sea, only to run into the awesome special effects of nominees Stefan Fangmeyer, Habib Jagapur, John Frazier, and Walt Conti, who did indeed create the perfect storm. And the Oscar goes to... <laughs> I knew it. Right. Your turn. Go and announce it. <laughs> Your turn. And the Oscar goes to... Gladiator. John Nelson, Lou Corbo, Timber, and Rob Harvey. This is the first Academy Award and nomination for John Nelson. Near Cole... Wow. Thank you, members of the Academy, for this great honor. First and foremost, I'd like to thank our director, Ridley Scott, for his genius, vision, leadership, and trust. I'd like to thank all my great team at Mill Film London, who did the visual effects. Uh, Tim Burke, Rob Harvey, Laurent Huguenot, uh, Nikki Penny, Emma Norton, Nancy St. John, uh, um, and, uh, to Bill Schultz, <laughs> a ton of other people I'm just forgetting right now. I'd like to thank our great practical and prosthetic effects team of Neil Corbold's with Neil Corbold, uh, Paul and Ian Corbold, Trevor Wood, John Evans, Michelle Taylor, and Dave Hunter. I'd like to thank everyone at DreamWorks and Universal, our class act, a pleasure to work with. I'd like to thank my wife, Deborah, my son, Miles, my mom in heaven, my dad and family in Detroit. Happy birthday, Dad. I love you. We'll be right back with Renee Zellweger, Goldie Hawn, and a very special musical event. Bit of a culture clash. American Express. Lovely. Let's do the whole country. I'm a little light on the lingo. You get a full gander down a frog with me? All right. We've got Cornish pasties, mushy peas, bangies and mash, public squeak and lovely Tokyo. Looking for a bunch of fives? Bunch of fives? That's a good one. One genuine British bulldog. I'll take them. Don't mind the sheep, they're getting narky. Narky. Don't go down there. Oh, oh by heck is not. We are getting so killed here. He might have a little husky in him. Is that going to hurt us? I'll have a banger, a squeak and a toad. Maybe some bubbles on the side. I'm definitely bubbles in time. That was a wicked googly. So I took a butcher's up the apples and pears and said, what is this, the tea interval? <laughs> All over the world, you can do more with the American Express card. I have no idea what I'm talking about. She's 
with the delightful star of such films as Nurse Betty and Jerry Maguire. Please welcome Renee Zellweger. A few weeks ago, at an impressive gathering of Hollywood's version of the Silicon Valley, awards for outstanding scientific and technical achievement were announced. I had the pleasure of presenting the SciTech Awards on behalf of the Academy. Not only was it a great party, but I also learned about some amazing advances in movie making. Academy Awards of Merit for Pixar's Render Man were presented to Rob Cook, Lauren Carpenter, and Ed Catmull. It was an honor for me to present this year's recipient of the Gordon E. Sawyer Award for Technological Achievement to Erwin W. Young. I come from a family that's been in the motion picture industry a long time. Part of it deals with science and the other part, the art. And I have always felt that there is no better relationship than between the scientist and the artist. More so because science and art are the same. Congratulations to all of the winners. Please welcome Sigourney Weaver. You know, having worked with Ridley Scott twice, I know what a truly great director he is. Our third nominated film brings the glorious battles of ancient Rome back to the big screen. It's a classic tale of courage, betrayal, and revenge, played out by a general who becomes a slave, a slave who becomes a gladiator, and a gladiator who defies an empire. What we do in life? It goes in eternity. You'll win the crowd, and you'll win your freedom. I will win the crowd. I will give them something they've never seen before. And now I'm so pleased to introduce a woman that I've had the pleasure of working with in two films. She's an Oscar winner, she's beautiful, a rare screen presence, and everyone who knows her loves her. Goldie Hawn. There is one group of highly talented men and women in film whose contribution requires that they not call attention to themselves. They are the composers, people who supply the music that invisibly heightens and brightens every key scene in a film. To perform excerpts the five from, whoops, I knew I couldn't do this right. <laughs> to perform excerpts from the five films nominated for original score, <laughs> we are indeed fortunate. <laughs> You know, you think when you grow up, you get to learn how to at least read. <laughs> we are indeed, and you know, these guys are so amazing. I'm like in awe. We're fortunate to have two of the world's greatest instrumentalists grace our stage. Please welcome the renowned cellist Yo-Yo Ma and the brilliant violinist Itzhak Perlman.
And the nominees for best original score are The Patriot by John Williams. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon by Tan Doon. Milena by Ennio Morricone. Gladiator by Hans Zimmer. Chocolat by Rachel Portman. And the Oscar goes to Tan Doon. This is the first Academy Award and second nomination for Tan Dunn. He's also nominated for original song tonight for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I prepared something exactly 45 seconds. <laughs> My music is to dream without boundaries. Tonight, with you, I see boundaries being crossed. As a classical music composer, I'm thrilled to be honored here. Crouching Tiger breached East and West, romance and action, high and low cultures. Thank you, An Lee, Yo-Yo Ma, Peter Gelb, Michael Goffin, James Seamus, Bill Kahn. Thanks to Sony Classical, Cami, and G. Shimmer for their long support. Last, this is for two tigers in my family, my wife Jane, Ian, Sam, both born in the year of tigers. Thank you, Academy. Winona Ryder, John Travolta, and a remarkable performance by Oscar nominee Bjork. Anthony Hopkins. The career of the legendary Irving Thalberg lasted from 1918 to 1936, it's 18 years. The career of the legend we honor here tonight with the Thalberg Memorial Award has lasted 60 years so far. His name is Dino De Laurentiis, his legend lives as film's most influential independent producer, an energetic creative fountain of film. His passion for the entire movie making process has made him one of the most fascinating and fascinated producers of all the time. Born in pre-war Naples, Dino De Laurentiis grew up in love with cinema. Although his first career was acting, he soon realized that the most exciting place for him was behind the camera. At the age of 19, he produced his first film in Turin. After World War II, he played his role in the post-war Italian films that stunned the world. Working alongside such cinematic pioneers as Giuseppe De Santis. Roberto Rossellini. Vittorio De Sica. And Federico Fellini. Dino took home two Academy Awards for La Strada and Knights of Cabiria, both Fellini films. The Strada's award was the first foreign language Oscar ever voted by the Academy membership. Dino built his own studio called Dino Cita on the outskirts of Rome. There he began to produce the spectacles that employed some of the most powerful Hollywood celebrities of all time. I'm from the planet Earth. Moving his operations to the United States, Dino worked with more of film's greatest directors, always allowing them tremendous creative freedom. I'm a police officer! It's me, Superco! Do you believe the condor is really an endangered species? Holy shit! Talk to me like that! 
Dino De Laurentiis has been involved as producer, presenter, financier or distributor for more than 600 films in his career. They have garnered him 33 Academy Award nominations, 19 Italian Oscars and over 100 prestigious awards worldwide. Dino attributes his success to the three C's, cuore, cervello, and coraggio, heart, brains, and courage. The men might be in charge. What are you threatening me with? It's not a threat, it's a warning. Few people can boast of a career so diverse and with such longevity. Dino's philosophy of finding and nurturing new talent, combined with his belief in supporting the autonomy of artists, has made him one of the most prolific producers of all time. See you around. Ladies and gentlemen, my dear good friend, the great Dino De Laurentiis. Thank you, thank you very much with, for this big hug. And thank you, Tony. You're a fantastic guy. <laughs> He's a great actor. He's a great human being. I want to say thank you to the Board of Governor for this great honor. But my gratitude to go to six beautiful women. They love me. They give me hug. My wife, Marta. My daughter, Veronica. Raffaella. Francesca. Carolina. <laughs> little Dina. For the moment. I must say, I've been very lucky in my life. Three continents, different culture, through good times and not so good times, but today wonderful times, I had the privilege to work with the greatest master of all film. Let me dedicate this happy hour to the Italian film industry, with the hope, with the hope they come back in life with the new talent and fresh ideas. In my life, I'm proud, especially about one thing to give the opportunity to so many young directors for the first time. At this, I want to say something to the big studio. Not be afraid about young talent. New mind, young mind are the future of tomorrow films. And remember, Irving Thalberg himself was only 23 years old when he ran MGM. Finally, let me share this award with uh, 
all people, all talented people, all the young, working all my film behind the camera. Thanks to them and to everybody go to buy tickets, especially for my movie. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> Welcome, former double Oscar nominee, Winona Ryder. Hello. It's an incredible view, boy. Javier, Julian, John, thank you for your movie. Thank you so much. I am so incredibly excited to be here to introduce our next performer because I'm a huge fan and have been for a long time. <laughs> and uh, she's here to sing the fourth nominated song, I've Seen It All, which she wrote uh, from Dancer in the Dark, which she starred in and gave an incredible performance. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the phenomenal Bjork. I was going to wear my swan, but to me, they're so last year. 
But I'm glad to see Bjork is working again after her disastrous Supreme Court try. <laughs> you know, John Travolta is one of Hollywood's biggest stars, a two-time Oscar nominee. Here he is, John Travolta. Tonight, as we acknowledge the work of the many gifted people whose combined talents draw us into theaters around the world, we also want to honor and remember those who are no longer with us. So goodbye to the names we knew, the faces we loved, for all of us are better that you visited us for a while. Seventy third Annual Academy Awards on ABC, brought to you by The Joy of Pepsi, the proud sponsor of the Academy Awards. And Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Here is Oscar winner and a nominee for Best Actress tonight, Juliette Binoche, and the president of the Motion Picture Association of America, Mr. Jack Valenti. Cinema speaks to the world in every tongue. A baby's smile, an old man's tears, and a stolen kiss are universal. They need no translation. The five nominees for Best Foreign Language Film truly illuminate the diversity and ever-increasing popularity of foreign films today. And the nominees are... From Mexico. Amores Peros, 
Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu. From Taiwan, crouching tiger hidden dragon, Ang Lee. From the Czech Republic, divided we fall, Jan Rebeck. From Belgium, everybody famous, Dominique Derudet. From France, the taste of others, Agnès Jaoui. And the Oscar goes, Taiwan, crouching tiger, hidden dragon. This is the first Academy Award and third nomination for Taiwan. This is producer Ang Lee's first Oscar for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. He also nominated in the Best Director and Best Motion Picture categories. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, thank you, Academy, for, uh, for this special recognition for non-English movies. Uh, my thanks to my fellow producers, Shi Li Gong, Bill Kang, and uh, to enormously talented cast and crew who sacrificed so much, to James Shemus, David Lindy, Ted Hope, and everyone at Good Machine, and to Barbara Robinson at Columbia Asia, and uh, Garrett Wiggin at Sony, and to Tom Bernard, Michael Barker, and Marcy Bloom at Sony Classic for their masterpiece job. And, uh, and finally, to my friends and family in Taiwan, to my collaborators in Hong Kong, and everyone, uh, people in China who helped us so much in making this movie. This is a great honor, thank you. Please welcome Academy Award winner, Ben Affleck. The belief that bad things can't happen to good people is shockingly blown away in the fourth of our nominated films. It's an intricately woven tale of lives intersecting in the seedy, complex, and dangerous world of drugs, where nothing matters but the bottom line. It's a line that is blurred by greed, power, family, and duty. The emotional gridlock that is traffic. multi-talented recording and film star, Jennifer Lopez. The final nominated song comes from the film Wonder Boys. It is a story of a writer who attains artistic success early on and his attempts to sustain that level of achievement. The writer of the Oscar-nominated Oscar song from that film, Bob Dylan, was inspired by the story to write Things Have Changed. In a sense, it mirrors the ongoing career of Bob Dylan, who after 43 albums and 500 songs is still on the road performing and inspiring audiences all over the world. Tonight, live by satellite from Australia, where he's in the middle of a concert tour, is Bob Dylan to perform his Oscar-nominated song, Things Have Changed. I'm a worried man, got a worried mind. Nothing in front of me, no one behind. There's a woman on my lap and she Drinking champagne That white skin Got assassin's eyes I'm staring up into the sapphire-tinted sky I'm wheel dressed Waiting on the last train Standing on the gallows With my head in the dew Now I'm expecting I'll hear the big loose People are crazy at times I speak I'm locked 
tin tight and out of range. I used to care for things I had changed. I've been walking 40 miles of bad road. If the Bible is right, the world will explode. I try to get as far away from myself as I can. Some things are too up to touch. The human man can only stand so much. You can't win with a losing hand. Feel like falling in love with the first woman I. Someone and not even know it. Next 60 seconds could be like an eternity. Going low down on the line. All the truth in the world add up to one big lie. I'm in love with a woman that doesn't even appeal to me. Just the jinx and Miss Lucy, they. performances of the nominated songs. To refresh your memory, here are the titles and the writers of those songs contending for an Oscar this year. From Meet the Parents, A Fool in Love, music and lyric by Randy Newman. From Dancer in the Dark, I've Seen It All, music by Bjork, lyric by Lars Van Trier, and Sian Sigurdsson. From Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, A Love Before Time. Music by Jorge Calandrelli and Tendun. Lyric by James Seamus. From The Emperor's New Groove, My Funny Friend and Me. Music by Sting and David Hartley. Lyric by Sting. From Wonder Boys, Things Have Changed, music and lyric by Bob Dylan. And the Oscar goes to Bob Dylan for Things Have Changed from Wonder Boys.
good God, this is amazing. Uh, I've got to thank um, Curtis Hansen for uh, encouraging me to do this song, and everybody at Paramount, Sherry Langsing, and Jonathan Dolgen, but especially Curtis, who just kept at it and, uh, and said this song was right and just encouraged me to do it so much, and I'm so glad I did. Uh, everybody at Columbia Records, uh, rec my record company who supports me all through these years, uh, Tommy Matola, Donnie Einer, Larry Jenkins, uh, Will Botwin, John Agracias, everybody like that up there. I want to say hello to my, all my family and friends out there watching. Um, uh, and I want to thank the members of the Academy who, who uh, were bold enough to, uh, to, to give me this award for this song, which uh, obviously a, a, a song that doesn't pussyfoot around or turn a blind eye to human nature. And um, God bless you all with peace, tranquility, and goodwill. Thanks. Here's some dip. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> By the way, it was great seeing Bob Dylan live from Australia, which has an 18-hour time difference, which to Bob is normal. <laughs> and by the way, be sure to stay tuned throughout the whole show, because at the end of the night, we're going to vote someone out of show business. Russell Crowe in Gladiator. Do you not understand? I may die in this cell tonight or in the arena tomorrow. I am a slave. What possible difference can I make? This man wants what you want. Then have him kill Commodus! Tom Hanks in Castaway. Yes! Look what I have created! I have made fire! I have made fire! Ed Harris in Pollock. What's she doing here? He's gonna take you home. What's she doing here? You need to get cleaned up. <laughs> Jeffrey Rush in Quills. No, I write what I see, the endless procession to the guillotine. We're all lined up, waiting for the crunch of the blade. The rivers of blood are flowing beneath our feet. Coming up on the 73rd Oscar cast, the beautiful Ashley Judd, the brilliant Oscar winner Kevin Spacey, and a special presentation to a Hollywood giant. Stay right here. Like you and Eye of the Beholder, Ashley Judd. Good evening. I'm so delighted to be here. It's my third time, and I'm very grateful to the Academy for allowing a little country girl to come to the big party. Sometimes the best way to get rid of temptation is simply to yield to it, as the last of our nominated films deliciously illustrates. It's a comic fable set in what seems to be a tranquil French village. But when the cold north wind blows, the liberating powers of the senses are awakened and a small town war is sparked by the passions and fears aroused when a beautiful stranger opens a mysterious shop chock full of chocolat. You make friends with us. 
You make enemies of others. Better promise. We can help them to understand that they are not welcome. I think we've got to measure goodness by what we embrace, what we create, and who we include. Live a little. Award-winning actress, Julie Andrews. Good evening. Good evening. There is probably no screenwriter in Hollywood who has inhaled the sweet smell of success more often than tonight's recipient of an honorary Oscar Ernest Lehman. Now, <laughs> appropriately enough, that was the title of his brilliant novelette for which he co-wrote the screenplay in 1956. The film version of Sweet Smell of Success became a film classic, and attesting to the longevity of a great work of art, Ernest is now co-producing the work to become a Broadway musical 50 years after its inception. I first had the pleasure of meeting Ernie in 1964 while filming The Sound of Music. Ernie had written the screenplay for that most successful film. Over his remarkable career, Ernest Lehman has won more Best Screenplay Awards from the Writers Guild than anyone in Guild history. Under the category, Did He Write That Too?, would be listed such outstanding and varied films as Hello, Dolly, West Side Story, The King and I, North by Northwest, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, Sabrina, Somebody Up There Likes Me, From the Terrace, and Executive Suite. It is said that a picture is worth a thousand words, but for a writer like Ernie Lehman, it would take more than a million words to draw an adequate picture of him. So, for the next few minutes, let us turn to a picture of his pictures to speak for him and for us. Well, hello, how are you? How are you? And I might add, who are you? Who am I? You're a cookie full of arsenic. We've got a lot to learn yet. Yeah, we've got to learn them not to kill anybody. I knew you were going to kiss me today, but I didn't know I was going to kiss you back. You have come to apologize. I'm sorry, Your Majesty, but Good. I did not... Good. Apologize. I didn't say... I accept. No matter how horrible things are, they can always get worse. Clubs, chains, bigs, mick, what? Please, Captain, love them, love them I all. don't care to hear anything further from you I about my children. I am not finished yet, Oh, Captain. yes, you are. I told you about danger, didn't I? First, it makes you sick. Then I'm very, very loving. This is my life, my only life. And I'm living it in the middle of a Jewish joke. Do we know each other? Much too well. Will you marry me? We have a saying in Sweden. Why settle for one dish when there's smorgasbord? Have I ever told you how much I love you? Well, you've been talking for two hours, you creep. Roger O. Thornhill. What does the O stand for? Nothing. You know something. What? Sabrina, Sabrina, where have you been all my life? Right over the garage. Gentlemen, aren't really trying to kill my son, are you? From now on, the best of everything is good enough for me. All I wanted to say was, goodbye! What? Hello. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, 
Mr. Ernest Lehman. Thank you, you big, beautiful audience. <laughs> As for my fair lady, your words were the sound of music to my ears. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to the Board of Governors of our blessed Academy, you cannot imagine how happy you've made me. I accept this rarest of honors on behalf of all screenwriters everywhere, but especially those in the Writers Guild of America. <clears throat> we have suffered anonymity far too often. I appeal to all movie critics and feature writers to please always bear in mind that a film production begins and ends with a screenplay. <laughs> However, this glorious night is demonstrating the film belongs to many, to the creators of original works, to superbly talented actors, directors, producers, and to gifted collaborators. Had it not been for all of them, I certainly would not be up here having one of the most exciting nights in a long lifetime. <laughs> I dedicate this Oscar to my dear departed wife, Jacqueline, to my sons, Roger and Alan, my daughter-in-law, Julie, and to my sweet, darling wife, Lori, who has given me a whole new happy life. And now, on with this great show. Yeah. It is interesting to note that at the beginning of the evening, Mr. Lehman was 24. <laughs> Our next presenter. Uh, <laughs> Our next presenter, Kevin Spacey, is a great talent, Academy Award winner, and people in Hollywood think of him as an actor's actor. I think of him as an ophthalmologist. But that's just me. So here he is, Kevin Spacey. Thank you very much. I also have someone to thank, but not for last year, for tonight. I got off the plane yesterday and realized that I had left my tuxedo in Nova Scotia. And I would like to thank Dame Judy Dench for traveling across the country with my tuxedo so that I could be dressed this evening. She is, without a doubt, the classiest delivery service I have ever had. <laughs> well, it's been a year since I danced off this stage with Oscar, and I'm happy to report that uh, our relationship continues to be one of mutual admiration and respect. And tonight, I am sure that any of these ladies will be delighted to have the little golden guy around their house as well. So the nominees for best performance by an actress in a leading role are Joan Allen in The Contender. Principles only mean something if you stick by them when they're inconvenient. If I ever did answer the questions, even to exonerate myself, that would mean that it was okay for them to have been asked in the first place. 
Jesus. Juliette Binoche in Chocolat. And these are for your husband. Unrefined cocoa nibs from Guatemala to awaken the passion. <laughs> you've obviously never met my husband. Oh, you've obviously never tried these. Ellen Burstyn in Requiem for a Dream. I'm Sarah Goldfarb. And, and you should tell me when I'm going to be on television. Just sit for a moment. I'll ring them. I just want to know when. Maybe you lost my card. Please, darling, you'll have a look and you'll tell me. <laughs> Laura Linney in You Can Count on Me. I don't know what the church's official position is on fornication and adultery these days. And I felt really hypocritical not saying anything to you about it before. So, what is the official position these days? It's a sin. Good. I think it should be. Julia Roberts in Aaron Brockovich. You got a little girl? Yeah. Yeah, sexy, huh? How about this for number six? That's how old my other daughter is. Eight is the age of my son. Two is how many times I've been married and divorced. Sixteen is the number of dollars I have in my bank account. Eight five zero three nine four three. That's my phone number. And with all the numbers I gave you, I'm guessing zero is the number of times you're going to call it. winner and nominee tonight, Tom Hanks, will be joining us along with a special guest from another part of the world. Don't go away. And now it's time for the awards for Best Screenplay, Original and Adapted. Now, I wrote a novel this year called Shop Girl, and several, thank you. And several producers came to me and wanted to turn it into a movie, and I said, look, if you think you're going to take this book and change it around and Hollywoodize it and give it a new ending, well, that's going to cost you. <laughs> and now I'm proud to introduce one of the great stars of Hollywood, Mr. Tom Hanks, who in my book, took a shortcut to becoming a movie star. He only made hits. <laughs> so here he is, Mr. Easy Pants, Tom Hanks. Not since George Orwell wrote 1984, has one, um, has one writer's name conjured more speculation and fascination with a year than the author of 2001, A Space Odyssey. That writer is, of course, Sir Arthur C. Clarke. He is, he is at 83, perhaps the most influential science fiction writer in the universe. When Sir Arthur adapted his short story, The Sentinel, for the screen with the late Stanley Kubrick, they produced a memorable film in which the artificial intelligence of a supercomputer named the HAL 9000 fired the imagination of a generation of would-be and could-be space travelers. Tonight, from his home in Colombo, Sri Lanka, in front of this famous 2001 Moonscape mural, he will present an Academy Award for screenwriting. It is my profound honor to introduce Sir Arthur C. Clarke. Thank you, Tom. This may not look much like it, but I'm actually in Sri Lanka, and it's 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's my honor to announce the nominees for the best screenplay based on material already published or produced. I'll do it as quick as I can because I know how anxious the nominees are. I've been through the same ordeal myself. Somewhere in my files is the best Academy Awards speech never delivered on behalf of Stanley Kubrick and myself. That was in the last century. The nominees in this century are... Robert Nelson Jacobs 
for Chocolat, based on the novel by Joanne Harris. <laughs> Wang Hui Ling, James Seamus, Chai Kuo Jung for Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, based on the book by Wang Du Lu. Ethan Cohen and Joel Cohen for O oh Brother, Where Art Thou, based on the Odyssey by Homer. Stephen Gagan for Traffic, based on the British series Traffic, created by Simon Moore. Steve Cloves for Wonder Boys, based on the novel by Michael Chabon. And the Oscar goes to Stephen Gagan for Traffic. <laughs> for Stephen Gagan. If I, uh, if I made up a story, uh, where someone like me would find himself somewhere like this. Um, nobody would believe it. Nobody here. Uh, I have to thank my, my girlfriend, Michael, our son, Gardner. Um, I'd like to thank the Academy, my parents, Tom and Betty Haig of Louisville, Kentucky, who are somewhere up there in the balcony, I hope. Uh, I have to thank all the filmmakers, um, Steven Soderbergh, the director who took every single thing I could give him and asked for more and inspired me. Producers Ed Zwick, Laura Bickford, Marshall Herskovitz. I, I have something here that I have to, I have to make sure that I... Um, USA Pictures, Scott Greenstein, Russell Schwartz, um, and everybody in the cast and crew. And most importantly, four years ago, a lot of people raised out their, reached out their hands to me and helped me out. And, uh, this is for you guys. Thanks. The next writing award is for original screenplay. Doesn't take a great writer to explain the category. This is for a screenplay that is original. And here are the nominees in that creative endeavor. Cameron Crowe for Almost Famous. <laughs> Lee Hall for Billy Elliot. Susanna Grant for Aaron Brockovich. David Franzoni, John Logan, and William Nicholson for Gladiator. <laughs> Kenneth Lonergan for You Can Count On Me. And the Oscar goes to Cameron Crowe for Almost Famous. This is the first Academy Award and third nomination for Cameron Crowe. In 1996, he was a double nominee for Best Picture and Original Screenplay for Jerry Maguire. Um, the movie was a love letter to music and to my family. Uh, so I dedicate this to all the musicians who inspire us and uh, to my family, Alice Crow, Cindy Weber, and uh, Nancy Wilson, my incredible wife and collaborator. Um, thanks. Thank you, DreamWorks, Vinyl Films, Andy Fisher, Scott Martin, Lisa Stewart, Neil Preston, Danny Bramson, and uh, this incredible cast and crew. Kate, you're magnificent. Francis, I couldn't dream of a, of a greater way to, to live out this screenplay that uh, is based on my hopes and dreams. So also, uh, wouldn't be complete without saying hello to the master himself, Mr. Billy Wilder. So uh, here's to you, Audrey and Billy, and thank you so much, everybody.
up Best Director and Best Picture Oscars. Don't leave now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome two-time Academy Award nominee, Tom Cruise. tonight's Academy Award for Best Motion Picture is Oscar winner Michael Douglas. And in the end, all the blood, sweat, and tears that went into the deal making, the writing, the rewriting, the casting, the costumes, the sets, the directing, the acting, the editing, the tantrums, the phone calls, faxes, emails, lunches, dinners, press junkets, handshaking, backslapping, cajoling, and advertising. It all boils down to five films nominated for Best Picture. The nominees are Chocolat, David Brown, Kit Golden, and Leslie Holleran, producers. <laughs> Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Bill Kong, C. Lee Kong, and Ang Lee, producers. Aaron Brockovich, Danny DeVito, Michael Schamberg, and Stacey Shear, producers. Gladiator, Douglas Wick, David Franzoni and Branko Lustig, producers. Traffic, Edward Zwick, Marshall Herskowitz, and Laura Bickford, producers. And the Oscar goes to Gladiator. Douglas Wick, David Franzoni, and Bruno Lustig, producers. This is the first Academy Award and second nomination for Douglas Wick. It is David Franzoni's first Oscar and second nomination this evening for Gladiator. This is Branko Lustig's second Oscar. He won an Academy Award in 1993 for Schindler's List. It takes a lot of people to make a coliseum, but it only takes one or two to mess it up. To all the wizards who brought to life the sights, sounds, and citizens of a faraway world, we should take a chisel to this statue and give you your fair share. But instead, I hope you will accept our thanks for not messing it up. David Franzoni, great dreaming. Walter Parks and Laurie McDonald, you swooped in on your chariot and ran over everything and everybody in your way. Ridley Scott, you invaded three continents with your tireless perfectionism and brought, and brought, Ridley and you brought new meaning to the phrase, mad dogs and Englishmen in the noonday sun. Bill Nicholson and John Logan, you saved our flank. Russell Crowe, you filled a whole arena with the force of your face and put the human back in the hero. Stacy Snyder, Ronnie Meyer, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Steven Spielberg, Terry Press, in those early days where it looked like all roads might lead, not to Rome, but to ruin, you were gladiators. Sarah, Julia, Tessa, Lucy, for me, all roads lead to you. Uh, thanking all the same people Doug thanked, uh, but uh, for that gentleman genius, Ridley Scott, who transported us back thousands of years in time so effortlessly and beautifully. Thank you, Ridley. Russell, Joaquin, everyone, thank you so much. My wife, Nancy, my son, Hudson. 
My, my dearly departed dad, who was the greatest storyteller who ever lived, I'm sure is on high somewhere with Oliver Reed right now, throwing back some of the dark stuff and enjoying the hell out of this. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who made this movie together with us. Thank you, Ridley. Thank you for the honor to work with you. And thank you to everybody in the international big crew all around the world that help us to do it. Strength and honor. <laughs> Well, I know what you're thinking. Just as you really start to get into it, it's over. <laughs> thank you, astronauts, for watching my car. And thank you all for coming. I've had a great time tonight. Good night. Accommodations